Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. My name is Mark Spencer, uh, and right next to me here is Steve Martin. You know, we need... We need to like little bubbles up, but we don't have to say it over time. Right? Yeah, like maybe a call out. Yeah, let's that. say like, hey, who I am, who you are. We don't even have to introduce each other. It's like, boop, boop, there we go. That'd be good. So anyway, <laughs> um, we're here. We've been talking about audio in Final Cut Pro 10 and different things you can do with it. You did a little time stretching before and some ambient replacement. And now we're going to switch gears and talk about the compressor application. Is that no, right? No, we're no. not going to talk about compressor. I thought you said compressor. No, audio compressors. It, audio right. compressors. The theme is making your audio sound better, uh, sweetening. Right, right. right. Which so, I, that's why I was so confused. Now, compressors are really useful. I mean, people that uh, that are doing multi-track recording and instruments use compressors all the time because you think about it, you have you have drums that really got really loud attacks, yeah. and then you've got your guitars. You have to have a way to kind of even out those have different instruments so uh -huh. so they don't conflict with each other. And and the same with video, you have um, what we call dynamics. So it's like, like I'm, talk, I'm talking really soft, and all of a sudden I'm talking really loud. Right. And uh, you don't you don't want that wide variation in dynamics. And if you bring up the volume for the very low sounds and the high sounds are maybe peak and distort. Exactly. And so a compressor will allow you to kind of... Well, what a compressor does essentially, it makes the soft pa parts louder and the loud parts softer. That's what a compressor does. Okay. And you can do this in Final Cut Pro Yeah, you can do, yeah just using a, an effect plug-in. An effect in... That's, well, let's this, see. Okay, so here I have... The, the best way to see a compressor works is dynamics. Is the dynamics of a clip is against essentially uh, the variation. It, when you see a waveform and you see, in fact, let me um, uh, you see the waveform here. You see the dynamics. You, you see these spikes and then trails off here. Yeah. The, here, see the dynamics. Here, you got relatively low dynamics and all of a sudden these spikes. Huge. Yeah. Right. And you want to be able to tame that. That's what a compressor does. So you don't, as opposed to a video image where you often want a, a wide dynamic range, like very dark darks and right. bright whites. With audio, you frequently don't want such a broad range of, of right. levels. Especially, again, when you want to mix voiceover or, or dialogue with music mm -hmm. or other things in, in the track. So let's just apply a simple compressor. I'm going to just apply it to this piano, uh, loop this intro. I'm just going to grab this compressor right out of the effects. So you're in the effects, uh, browser, effects browser, and you're under the levels category. Right. Okay. I'm going to turn off, turn off skimming right now. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this and drop that right on the curtain call, okay? Now, when we select it, select the clip and go into the inspector, you'll find the compressor actually shows up right here in the top of the audio um, inspector area. You have the default, but what's really nice, if you've never used a compressor before, uh, you can actually click this and come up, there are presets for musical instruments. So, for example, this is a keyboard. There are preset compressors for keyboards right built in. So if you used to Soundtrack Pro, this is essentially the same interface. Yeah, it's a very similar way. So you can just, if you don't really know what you're doing, you could grab that and maybe be done. At maybe. That point. Um, although it's certainly not a one size fit all with a compressor. I mean, the dynamics will be uh, different from, okay. from instrument to instrument or track to track. But, but maybe a good starting point. Right. So if I go ahead and choose compressor one, you'll see immediately, I notice how the, the dynamics overall evened out pretty much. You still have your, you know, your a soft spots, but, yeah. but what it did is essentially evened out the entire track is dynamic so um, you don't have these high peaks and low lows. So it smoothed out the audio levels so there's not something really loud or really quiet Well, here's, here's another way to think of a compressor. I, I call it, a compressor is what I call an automatic volume turn downer. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is what the, the, the volume gets to a certain point, yep. it would be like somebody with a volume control turning it down, and down, there, so, turn uh, it down, turning it down. So you're setting what's called a threshold. So what a compressor does, you set the threshold by which the compressor kicks in. Okay, so it's not, it doesn't do anything if you're in like the safe zone. But as soon as you go outside the safe zone, then it says, uh-uh. Uh, they go, uh-uh, boom. Yeah. Goes, and you can, you can certainly overdo a compressor. And uh -huh. uh, we're going to look at the actual interface in a moment. But I, I just need people to understand that's what essentially a compressor okay. does. It's an automatic volume turn down or brings the low parts up, the high parts down, and it gives you an overall even dynamics across the track. That's what it does. Very okay. cool. So now um, I'm going to go to this timeline index, and I have markers. It's really handy because our... If okay, I so click, wait, you're, you're, so you're in the timeline index. Right, okay. timeline index, and I have a marker placed on a clip. Okay. What's nice is about this feature is it will just jump the playhead right to the position of the marker. So, you know, there's a marker. Yes. Now, the reason why I want to jump here is you can see, let me zoom in a little bit, you can see the, the varying dynamics here. You see you've got, uh, let me just play the clip. You'll see that they have this couple, this restaurant, and this, cup, this guy in the back, come, he introduces himself in a very uh, loud way. So let me just play you this. You must here. be a psychic or something, because... Uh, I don't know how you knew my Roberts! Hey, 
long time no see, Roberto. Bobby. How you doing, man? Okay, see? So you can see the dynamics represented by waveform yeah, all over fact, the place. Even in the red, which is really like right. warning. Now, you off. could, like you said, you could drag this up or down and using the volume. It's not the best way to handle something like this. A compressor is going to be much better at because evening if these. If we just brought the volume of him down, we're bringing the volume of everything down. Everything or up, or bringing the volume of everything up, exactly. Uh -huh. And uh, so what I'm going to do is just throw a compressor on this like that. I just throw it in. You can see that it immediately affects the waveform. Yeah, by default, in all the quiet sounds got a lot louder. And the loud parts even got louder. Even louder, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I'm going to select this and go back into the... Now, I'm not going to apply a preset here. I'm going to actually bring up the interface. And by the way, to bring up the interface, you click this little button is here. There, is there two just from applying it before? Oh, there, or I'm not sure what you're asking. There's two. I see compressor twice in there. Oh, there should, there should be only one compressor on there. Maybe I didn't take it off before. This, okay. okay, so now I have... There, I have a compressor. I have two okay. compressors. Good, good point. <laughs> I didn't know if there was like a no, left channel no, or right channel. No, or just one okay. compressor. I wasn't minding my P's and Q's. Q's. So I'm going to um, click the little button and I'm going to bring up the compressor interface here. Okay. Now, the, the thing about the compressor is you have a couple of main sliders in here. One is the threshold. And this, remember, I said that's the point at which the compressor is actually turning on. It's like a, gover it's like a governor. Yeah. On, I just remember from the lawnmower, like you can only go so fast and it, it cuts Well, let's just let's think of it as a trigger. At a certain yeah. point, at a certain dB, the compressor is triggered. And right here, it's, it, the, the trigger is minus uh, 20 dB, okay? okay. Um, and then the, the, the other important part about a compressor is the ratio. It's the, it's the, what's a, uh, the compressor is described as, the, as a ratio between the in and out. So you've got an input signal coming in and yes. output going out. So a two to one, what it's going to say, if you have a 20 dB signal coming in, mm -hmm. it's going to produce 10 going out. It's two to one. Okay. 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 So it's, it's really kind of a curve. So if I, if I set the ratio to compl uh, one to one, that means the same signal coming in is going out. That's turning the compressor completely it off. It turns it off. It's not having any effect. Not, a, not any yeah. effect at all. Okay. So one to one is completely off. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of dialogue, uh, you know, from the, uh, Damien's tutorial um, that's on our site right now, he he does a lot of work. He he was dialogue. He's a four to one, four one, four, uh, four to one ratio is yeah. a good starting place for dialogue, dialogue. Okay. and voice and voiceover. And you could see you have your essentially what, what amounts to an input curve and, and an output output curve right here. Yeah, and nothing's being affected below 20. So we've got this 45 degree line so that's, where nothing's being affected and then it kind of and rolls. And then it, start, then it rolls off, rolls exactly. Off. Okay. Right. So you can then, you could see that at four to one, and then you could also play with the actual, at this point, you know, you can play with the, the you know, the, the threshold. threshold. The, the, so you can see this curve starts earlier if you drag that down. Right, okay. exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. In that fact, totally what's sense. really great about soundtracks, I mean, Final Cut Pro's compressor, <laughs> is that, sorry. Well, it looks, it, it looks just like the um, same interface in it, Soundtrack Pro, it, it, right? Is, it is essentially. Is it the same logic it's plugin? It's the same plugin, exactly. Okay. Um, the, the thing about this is that, um, notice as I'm adjusting these, uh, no, look! Look at how the wave. Look at how the waveform is actually reacting to my adjustments. Right. You never got that in. You never got any sort of feedback like that at all in Final Cut Pro 7 or Soundtrack. You would just have to apply it and then just. Okay, hope. and then see what happens. But you're actually, huh. as you're making these adjustments, you're actually uh, seeing the result of that of that compressor. Uh, of that compressor. I'm going to bring that threshold down. I'm going to. Crank it down a little bit. Notice, look at look at the waveform how it's, how it's reacting now. Yep. And notice how the dynamics are kind of getting evened out, and of course the gain is a little bit high for the whole thing. So I just bring the gain. So without up. even listening to it, you're kind of sculpting I'm, I'm the scu sound I'm sculpting by it. looking at that graph. Exactly. And so what you get is an overall even sound across the whole the and whole. And you can clip. also the waveform down here in the timeline is reacting as well, right? That, well, that, we're, yeah, it's okay. reacting in the graph and it's reacting. They're both reacting as you're dialing it in. Yeah. So if I play this back. Let's see, if I can move this out of the way here. You'll see it's it's even evened out pretty much across the whole Thank clip. You. you know, you must be a psychic or something, because uh, I don't know how you knew my. Robert! Hey, long time no see, Roberto! Yep. And it also, it's actually showing you how much gain is being reduced by that little bar okay. as you're playing it back. So it's the, the, the tool is very handy in terms of feedback. It gives you a lot of feedback vis a vis this graph and vis-a-vis -vis the actual waveform so in e the... So even if you've never really worked with a compressor before, you can kind of figure out what's going on because it's so interactive. It is very interactive, and mm -hmm. you could... The only thing that, that, that I don't particularly care for, and it's broken right now, I don't know if it's broken or it's just an oversight, but I can't loop this. So normally you would uh, use the forward slash key, you would select it, and play. <laughs> And what would be really handy is to be able to adjust the compressor as it loops while it's playing. While it's yeah. playing. But watch what happens. It'll, it'll loop. But watch what happens when... 
See, it loops, but now watch what happens when I touch one of the controls. Yeah. I'm just going to make a slight adjustment, and what should happen is it should loop and play back that adjustment, but because I made that adjustment, watch the play, it just goes off. It's just going to keep it goes, going. goes off into the East Bay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, east Bay. Just went into I guess the east that's the right, the right yeah, direction. Yeah, just went into yeah. the East Bay. So, cool. Yeah. And just for, for folks who may um, be new to Final Cut Pro 10, we've been talking about a couple legacy things. We mentioned Soundtrack Pro, which is an application that used to be part of Final Cut Studio that was mm -hmm. a separate application for doing work in audio. But now, a lot of that functionality is built right into Final Cut Pro 10. It's right in there. And those, that whole interface is from another application called Logic where it's also integrated into this. So sort of other pieces of technology from other applications being all bundled inside of Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, it's, it's great, all the tools you need is, are right, right there. there. Right there. Awesome, Steve, thank you. And you have um, a tutorial specifically about sweetening audio? Yes, yeah, it's called Final, ed Sound Editing in Final Cut Pro 10. You can find it on our repletraining.com. And Repl -training really, really helpful, it's not really long. You can get gets right to the point and you'll be using these tools and you like, How, wh why didn't someone tell me about this before? That's so great. please check out RippleTraining.com. Steve, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.